What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. And initial jobless claims rose for the third week in a row today. That's despite the expiration of the federal expanded unemployment benefits and despite almost 11 million job openings in the United States right now. So what does that mean? Well, when it comes to labor, it's a seller's market. And you employers out there, you're going to have to pay up if you want your people to come back to work. That means more inflation on the horizon. You ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Gamble, and I'm nobody special. And despite 11 million job openings in the United States and the expiration of the expanded unemployment benefits, it looks like Americans, at least millions of them, are still not coming back to work. We still have a huge vacancy in the labor market right now, and we have a lot of people who are unemployed. And that leads people to say, what is causing this? Well, folks, it is inflation. This is an inflation problem. When the cost of living goes up and wages don't go up commensurate with that cost of living, that means those wages are less attractive to people. And if you want to convince people to sell you their time, you need to pay a reasonable rate. And as the cost of living goes up, the amount you need to pay people for their time goes up with it. And employers are still not getting that. Wages must rise. In particular, in industries like restaurants and hospitality, which tend to be on the lower end of the wage spectrum, those are being hit the particularly hardest. Well, if you need people to come back, you better make sure your hourly wait rate that you're paying is at least worth their time to come into work. So far, it's not. Now, there is a natural solution to a labor shortage, just like any other shortage. The natural solution is higher prices, i.e. higher wages. Wage is the price of labor. It's when you work for somebody, you are selling them your time, and the price of your time needs to go up commensurate with the rise in the cost of living. And also, while you're at it, you need to smash that big, beautiful like button and subscribe to my channel for the YouTube al algorithm. It helps this channel to keep growing, and it would really help me out. I'd be forever in your debt. Now, with that in mind, let's shrink my big, fat melon of a head and get into some of the numbers. Weekly jobless claims rise more than expected at 362,000. That is three weeks in a row of consecutive rises in initial jobless claims. And this comes following the expiration of the federal unex expanded unemployment benefits. Now, a lot of folks were hoping, I think a lot of employers were hoping when those benefits expired that it would result in a big surge of people coming back to work. And early data indicates that is not happening. People are not coming back to work yet, which means wages must rise. And if wages rise, that means employers have to pass on their higher costs to the consumers. That means prices for goods and services must also rise. And yes, there's that big I word again. That means more inflation. And just want to scroll down here. This is a weekly chart going back to January of this year. And let's zoom in on this a little bit, make it a little bigger, showing initial claims for unemployment insurance. Now, you did see a big drop at the beginning of this year. That was the reopening. And then we leveled off. But you notice we tended, we bottomed out in September. And I think a lot of folks were hoping for a big drop in the beginning of September as those benefits expired, but we haven't gotten it. We've actually gotten three consecutive upticks. All right, now that's not a major trend yet, but considering we were hoping for a big drop off, well, that's not a good indicator. That means there's more wage inflation coming. There's a couple of things I wanted to point to. I found this article in Business Insider that was, uh, I think some of you millennials are really gonna enjoy this. Geriatric millennials have the most power in the workforce right now. Now, geriatric millennials, what is that? That sounds like a sounds like an oxymoron. Geriatric millennials is referring to people who are kind of like like me, right in between Gen X and Millennial. You're not really sure where you land. I'd say this is people like 38 to 41, right? Right smack dab in the middle of their careers. They're not the super tech savvy millennials, but they're also not the tech ignorant boomers, right? They're right in the middle. And these tend to be the people who are most driving the great resignation and people who have the most power in the labor market right now. And that's important, all right? When it comes to labor, it is a seller's market. You keep that in mind. You, the employee, you who works for somebody, you have more power now than you have ever had at any point in your career. And if you want to advance your career, if you want to expand your quality of life, now is the time to exercise that power by holding out for a better price. Or consider if you've been 
putting off a change in career or a change in jobs or a change in companies. There has never been a better time than today to do that. All right, now let me cover my butt here and say this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research, your own TD. Arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. And I guess I have to throw in there that I'm not a career advisor either. So again, do your own, make your own career decisions, folks. However, the trending here is pretty powerful. And it shows that geriatric millennials, people 38 to 41, are in the most favorable position they have ever been at at any point in their life. Older millennials and younger Gen Xers are driving America's great resignation. In the middle of this cohort are geriatric millennials, known for acting as a generational bridge. With their unique skill set and greater freedom to quit, they have the upper hand in the workforce. And there's one thing I wanted to point out here. In this article, by now you've heard about the Great Resignation. Coined by psychologist Anthony Klotz, the trend involves millions of Americans dropping out of the workforce throughout the economy as it reopened more and more. Over 3.6 million people quit in April, May, June, and July, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But a certain cohort is leading the way. According to a re recent analysis by Harvard Biz Review, that looked at 9 million employee records for more than 4,000 companies. Mid-career employees are driving the quits. Resignation rates are highest among 30 to 45-year-old employees, increasing on average by more than 20% over the past year. Now here they expand a little bit on what they mean by the geriatric millennial. Smack in the middle of this job resignation cohort is the geriatric millennial, a term popularized by author and leadership Erica Dewan to describe those turning 36 to 41 this year. She said geriatric millennials are unique because they straddle a digital divide between older and younger generations in the workplace which enables them to serve as a hybrid role in the work workplace by bridging communication styles, teaching traditional communication skills to younger employees and digital body language to older team members. For example, she said the geriatric millennial would know to send a Slack message to a Gen Z coworker instead of calling them out of the blue, which, might, which they might find alarming. But they would also know to be mindful of an older coworker's video background and help walk them through such technology. So what they're saying here is because of your age, because you're right smack in the middle of these two very distinctive age classes, you are more valuable than ever before. You, the geriatric millennial, age 36 to 41. And then this is a very powerful paragraph. The geriatric millennial ultimately holds a lot of sway in the workplace right now. Being able to act as a generational bridge gives them a unique tool set, making them an asset to any employer seeking to create a cohesive and communicative environment. And with many quitting in droves, they have the power. All right. That is important, folks. They have the power. You, the geriatric millennial, okay, you are at the most valuable point in your life right now. And historically, you are at a point where you are more valuable than ever before to employers because there's a lot of folks like you who are quitting your job right now. And so there's a lot of people looking to hire someone like you, the geriatric millennial, age 36 to 41. Now, I found some other articles that were talking about things like how employers are getting very creative, offering signing bonuses, offering special perks, tuition assistance, things like that. Now, generally, these are nice perks to have, but I want you to keep in mind when employers offer these perks, what they're doing is they've done the math and realized that it's cheaper to offer you this perk. They realize it's cheaper to give you this little psychological jolt of the immediate payoff of a signing bonus versus paying you a small amount more in your hourly rate or in your salary. For example, take a $500 signing bonus, right? If you're new to the job, hey, a $500 bonus, that's cash up front, that's really nice. But if you think about it, averaging out a 40-hour work week, that really only boils down to about 25 cents an hour over your first year. Is that really that big of a bonus? Now, there's one more article I wanted to point out that I found today. So one more time, we're going to shrink my big fat melon of a head and we're going to move me over. And this is in the website CFO Dive, talking about how labor shortages will prolong inflation. Okay, And I've been saying this for quite a while now. I really think that a lot of the folks who are in positions of authority in this country are overlooking just how important wage pressures are going to be to the inflation narrative. The Federal Reserve in particular has not been paying enough attention to this. Wages have got to rise. And you know, for the Fed, whose their big mandate is full employment, and they've been sitting here watching the inflation numbers tick up, tick up, tick up, even though they've been so stimulative to the economy, they're still not really seeing the, the, the growth in jobs that they've been expecting. 
because the wages are not rising as fast as inflation. When inflation rises faster than wages, that's people's quality of life going down. And when people's quality of life goes down, it makes them hate their job. It makes them not want to work. All right. If people's quality of life is improving, that motivates people to want to work. All right. So wages must rise. I've been saying this for a long time. It is long overdue. And a lot of you employers who are out there who have been sitting back waiting for those expanded unemployment benefits to expire so your people come back to work, well, guess what? Those benefits expired and your people haven't come back. You got to raise your prices. You have to raise your wages. And I understand that that money doesn't just come out of thin air, that you're not your own Federal Reserve, you can't just print dollars, and that you have a business to run and you have to maintain profit margins. And that also means you're going to have to raise your prices. Folks, this is inflation. This is the the inevitable result of dumping trillions of dollars into the economy. And we can't sit here and pretend like it's it doesn't have consequences. You got to raise your wages. You got to raise your prices. And I'm not advocating for more inflation. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here hoping for more inflation. But that die is cast. All right. We've already made that decision. It's going to happen whether we fight it or not. Prices are going to rise. So I just want to read you some things from this article here. The Federal Reserve may underestimate the impact on inflation from widespread labor shortages, central bankers say. I just want to reiterate, the solution to shortages is higher prices. Okay, The solution to shortages is not mandates, it's not rationing, it's not more overarching and draconian involvement of governments in our day-to-day lives. No, the natural solution to shortages is higher prices. All right, There's a chip shortage. Raise the price of chips. There's a fuel shortage. Raise the price of fuel. It discourages use and it makes supply and demand seek equilibrium. There's a shortage of labor. Raise the price of labor. Raise the wages and watch that shortage disappear. I just want to read you a little bit out of this article. The coronavirus and workforce disruptions have created labor shortages that may prolong a surge in prices beyond current Federal Reserve forecasts, according to some central bankers. High inflation has already persisted longer than Fed policymakers projected, you think, challenging their assurances that a surge in prices is transitory. And that paragraph is pretty powerful, all right? Remember, back in January, Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve talking heads were sitting there saying inflation is well below our 2% target, and we think any any inflation is going to be transitory. They're going to be temporary little blips. Well, here we are, almost 10 months later, and inflation is way higher than they said it was going to get. And it looks like it's going to last way longer than they said it was going to last. No kidding. That's what happens when you dump trillions of dollars into the market. And considering the impact on wages and the fact that wages have not yet risen, even though the cost of food has gone up, the cost of health care has gone up, the cost of rent, real rent, not owner's equivalent rent or whatever the CPI BS number is, I'm talking about real rent, has gone through the roof. All right? People's lives have gotten more expensive, and if you want them to sell you their time, you've got to pay up. That's what this, that is the overarching theme here, folks, is inflation has happened, and because inflation has happened, you've got to raise your, your wages, and that means more inflation is on the horizon. So, bad news if you're a small business owner, if you're looking to hire somebody, unfortunately, that means you've got to pay up. Great news if you're looking to get hired, or if you're looking to tra- change jobs. Or if you are that geriatric millennial, 36 to 41, congratulations, you are at peak market value for you. So go out there and demand the price that the market says you're worth. And if your employer isn't willing to pay up, don't worry. There's 11 million job openings in this country right now. Someone is willing to pay up for you. Make the most of it. Folks, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. It really helps me out, helps me to keep this channel growing. In the meantime, live small and dream big.